And that is how you solve this equivalent expression problem, only using Desmos, no calculations needed. Hey guys, my name is Erica. I'm an environmental engineer, and today I'm going to show you how to do an equivalent expression problem only using Desmos. I tell all of my tutoring students, you have to learn how to use Desmos. This is such an important tool for the SAT. If you aren't using Desmos, you are missing out on a higher score on the SAT. So today I'm going to show you how to do this specific problem. Hopefully you'll be able to finish it in like 30 seconds or so. And don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the things. And if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me, check out the description um, box down below and you'll find a link to my scheduler so you can tutor a session with me. All right, let's get started. All right, so we are gonna be working on the problem above my head. Let me move it so you guys can see it well. This is going to be from the advanced math domain. Let's jump up there really quick. Um, if you take a practice SAT, they should give you some feedback as to which domains you have to work on for the math section. There are four different domains. This particular domain that we're working on today is the advanced math domain. Um, and the skill within that domain is the equivalent expressions. Okay, so that's what we're working on just for your information. So you guys know what you're studying here. All right, so for this particular problem, Notice that we have an equal sign in the middle. We have the left-hand side here with two unknown variables, A and B, and then on the right-hand side, um, we just have like a normal polynomial, all right? So what this essentially is saying is that the left-hand side has to be equal to the right-hand side. And the question reads, the equation above is true for all x where A and B are, co are constants. What are the value of A times B? So we have to figure out what A and B are. Now we can do this in decimals without doing any math whatsoever. I will add though that these problems can get a little bit tricky using Desmos, so it's definitely a good idea to know how to do it by hand, and I'll show you guys how to do it by hand in part two, all right? So what you wanna do is put one side of the equation um, on the first line here. So let's just do the two, uh, the 20x cubed. Minus 9x squared and minus 2x plus 12. Okay, and that's going to give you, let me make sure I wrote this all down right. Nah. So, okay, we're going to scroll in. So this is what that shape is going to look like, all right? Now, because we have that equal sign in the middle, the, the left-hand side has to be exactly the same. So in decimals, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to write it in. It's going to give you an exclamation because it doesn't like it when you have these random variables. But don't worry, it's going to add a slider. So click add slider. We're going to do plus 3, and then we're going to do 5x squared. Like here. There we go. Have my x squared minus bx plus 4, and then you want to add that b. So now it's saying if b is 1 and a is 1, this is what that line is going to look like, the blue line. I'm going to flash it on and off, um, which obviously isn't the same because it needs to be right on top of that red line for it to be equivalent, for it be, to be the same, okay, equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of move stuff around to see what it does. So b kind of makes stuff go up and down. A kind of does some flippy thing, all right? So what we want to do is essentially move this around until we can get it to match. Now this is, can be a little bit difficult. Like I said, this isn't the ideal way of doing it, um, but you, once you get good at like manipulating stuff, you'll be able to figure out. So this kind of makes it small. And let's see, let's get close to make sure. Okay. Let me move it just a bit, yeah, okay. There we go, so that's that's gonna match. I'm gonna flash the blue on and off. So this is telling me that A is four, B is six. The problem is asking what is A times B? We're gonna do A times B. It's gonna give us 24, the answer is C. So that's how you can do this problem, just using Desmos alone. But like I said, these can get a little bit tricky because you do have to try to find the match. And sometimes it's just not gonna be like all that intuitive as to what you're supposed to do to get it to match. Um, so part two, I'm gonna show you how to do it by hand fully, but also how to do it partially by hand. So you can do part of it by hand, because once you're given one variable, it's really easy to find the other one in Desmos. So you can do part of it by hand and the other part you can do in Desmos. So I'll show you guys how to do that. In part two, I think it's really important because you might get a question like this and it's not gonna work out as nicely as this one did. Um, so just as an FYI, okay? So again, if you want tutoring, um, check the description box down below. I do one-on-one -on -one online tutoring, exactly what I just showed you here, how to use Desmos to solve problems, as well as how to do them by hand. Um, and yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Bye.